you'll ask further in the interview, what was the first, uh, what was the hardest thing about starting your own barbershop or starting your own hairstyling salon? You're going to ask as you get to the end of your, you know, film as you're trying to sculpt them, what was the hardest thing, what was maybe one of the first things that was hard for you, and then what was the most difficult thing that was hardest for you, so that you sculpt and have interview and b-roll and footage to cut to that follows you along the first fall, the last fall, and on into the climax. What was the best day? What was the most exciting? How did it feel after the first six months where you actually started paying back the business loan for this hair salon? Or how did it feel when you took your creations and went to a hair show? and won the prize. So you're going to look for that climactic moment. You're going to look for what's going to represent in my documentary the climax. What's going to represent getting the goal? And then you're going to ask questions and interview them and then say, can we go down and shoot you at a hair show so that you have footage of the character at the hair show? So you're going to still do the same thing in a documentary that you do in a fictional film. Fahrenheit 9-11 falls into the Why Done It story arc. The character Michael Moore is trying to get to why it happened. Not every documentary filmmaker makes themselves the character. Some documentary filmmakers make another subject the character. Let's move on to Full Triumphant. So the Full Triumphant storyline is, as we see, uh, Forrest Gump is a great example. He is ultimately, and when we say fool, we don't mean someone who's an idiot. We mean someone who doesn't seem up to the task that's set before them. Somehow they're lacking in some way. A lot of times it's a naivety that the person has. But it really just means someone who's not up to the task in front of them, but they achieve it because of their naivete, because of the very thing that they lack, they actually achieve the goal. Other examples are 40-year-old version, Anchorman is a great example of the full triumphant. He's not up for the task with all his ego and his bravado of the character played by Will uh, Ferrell. He's not up for the task of having a female anchor, co-anchor. He is not at all up for that. He, he is oblivious, even uh, you know, willfully oblivious to understanding that and, and having his world be changed. One of the brilliant things in that film that um, that comes through is that he doesn't remain, he doesn't grow, or, or I don't want to say he doesn't grow, but he remains lacking in that thought process, and it's in that very flaw that he has that he ultimately ends up being triumphant, that he ultimately ends up saving uh, his, his, his love interest, and then becoming to accept having a female co-anchor, and also being in love with this person who is the co-anchor. But that is a really uh, strong example of full triumphant. Then we have the institutionalized storyline. The institutionalized storyline is not always a specific institution, but it means, um, is it a way of being, it is a way of life that has become institutionalized, it's become regimented. American Beauty is a great example uh, starring Kevin Spacey in which he's looking at developing um, how he exists in the world in the institution of America, in the middle class stymied life that he has. 12 Years a Slave is another really beautiful film by Steve McQueen that explores um, how a character being put into a particular institution, and in that case, it's the institutionalized slavery that happened in the American South that he is dealing with, and he's displanted, and he's misplaced there. And how does he either reject or become a part of the institution that's around him? The main character um, that played, the main actor that plays in this film, she would tell, she would tell really does a great job of remaining out of a fish out of water. And that's what we want to focus in that's happening in your storyline and institutionalized. You want to remember that when you're writing your character, that your character is not a part of the institution, that your character is a fish out of water, your character doesn't fit in, that this is not his world or her world. And now she's in a world that everything is going to be about learning how to get on in this institution. Kevin Spacey's character is out of place, he's out of sorts, he's of the world in American Beauty, but he's out of sorts with the world. She would tell that Gia Ford does a really wonderful performance of making sure that his character is out of sorts in this world, that he does not fit in, and that storyline is concerned with that. So if you're like Steve McQueen or Sam Mendes developing any of these, um, Sam Mendes who directed American Beauty and Steve McQueen who directed 12 Years a Slave, if you're in that uh, story arc and trying to develop that film, you want to make sure that as you're moving your character through the call to action, the last fall, on into the climax, that you're keeping alive, that this is not a world that they know, that they have to learn things to get on in this world. They have to take on new ways of being, 
just to be able to fit in and make it through. They're always going to be asked the question in an institutionalized film. The premise usually comes down to, does the person choose to be a part of this new institution or does the person choose to step out of the institution? War dramas do fall in or share this, this story arc. And many times the soldier does accept that institution, does accept what the war, what the army world has to provide for them. So it's not always a down talking or, or, or a, um, a disapproval of the institution that we're looking at. Many times it can also be a becoming a part of that institution, that it has something to gain. Superhero is similar to, to Full Triumphant in that you have a character who is an ordinary person who now is called into extraordinary means. It's only similar because both of them from the outset look as though they wouldn't be able to meet the challenge that's set before them. The difference is that Full Triumphant, it's because of his naivete or it's because of his flaw that makes him a fool that he succeeds. Whereas in the superhero story arc, he, the very thing, the very thing that made him ordinary is, is something that he grows away from and becomes a superhero. It's not their ordinariness that allows them to meet the challenge, it's that they rise to the occasion. Sort of follows that quote that a hero is not made, but a hero rises to the uh, challenge that they face. So The Dark Knight is a really great example. Uh, ultimately, you have a character in Bruce Wayne who is not a superhero. He's an ordinary rich kid. He's, he's as ordinary as a rich kid comes. So yes, he has some extraordinary element to him because he is very wealthy, but among wealthy people, he's a dime a dozen. So he then rises to the occasion that he need, must face in, in the film The Dark Knight. Aaron Brockovich, the main character, um, she has to rise above. She's very ordinary. She comes to discover that there's pollution, for those who haven't seen that film, that there's pollution in her town, and she's going to speak out about it. This is something that, from her background, she's not educated, she didn't go to college, and yet she's going to rise to the challenge. And she does, in fact, rise to the challenge. She learns and becomes educated and meets the challenge that is before her. So Julia Roberts, who is the star of that film, plays a character that is ordinary, that rises to the challenge. And that's what we want to focus on in Superhero. Many times we do see that that story arc is shared by the comic book genre film. We have a character, whether it's Spider-Man, whether it's Iron Man, whether it's Captain America, whether it's um, Superman, a character who is ordinary. And Superman is really interesting because he's ordinary in that he is in the place in America that his mythos comes out of is ordinary, everyday Midwest salt to the earth, ordinary people. He, when he is called to rise to the, to the occasion, he already has superpowers to him. So even though he already has superpowers, he must rise to the occasion of using those superpowers, of performing and executing and, and um, displaying those superpowers given the situation that he's put in. This is actually something that superhero, the story of Spider-Man, um, of Superman, tends to be one that's very difficult in current storytelling. A lot of filmmakers, as we've seen that franchise after the 80s, reboot and fail and reboot, and right now it's hanging in there, but a sign that it's not as strong as they would have wanted it to be back when we look at genres and the mitigating risk is the next understanding of Superman that we're going to see from, from um Zack Snyder's understanding of him or realization of him, he's got to be paired with Batman. So they don't feel confident that he can stand alone. And one of the things we look at, when we actually look at the story arc of what Zack Snyder did, which that film was highly criticized, but when we do look at the story arc, we see that he did try to build an ordinary man rising to the challenge so that he was following the superhero story arc. But when we look at his act one, he's not focused at all on the ordinariness of his main character. He's focused on the extraordinary, the extraordinary element of his main character by focusing on the planet that um, Superman comes from and giving us an entire storyline. He's displaced his backstory. That's all story that happens before the story of the moment in time of Superman. But he's giving all of that to us in Act 1. As we saw, give us the backstory in Act 2. Don't give it to us in Act 1. By the time we get to the character of Superman, Clark Kent, we don't feel we know him very well. We feel we know his father quite well. We know jor quite well, or jor quite well. But we don't know Clark Kent very well at all. And I think, as we can see, the problems of story arc, the problems of crafting that script are what made that film less successful than it could have been. 
But if he had realized and saw the onus of his story, as, as Blake Snyder calls us to do, and as I am instructing and calling you guys to do, and how strong craft is, perfecting your craft, is to ask yourself to use all these as tools. And ask yourself, am I dealing with the superhero tool? That in my act one, what I really should be focused in is introducing my audience to the ordinariness of this character. To how common, how every man this character is.